evening. Welcome to our Arborland Montessori webinar for Find Your Super Parent Powers in 2020. My name is Veronica Chen and I am the Assistant Principal here at Arborland Montessori Children's Academy in Fullerton. Um, I'm also a past Arborland sixth grade alumni. I'm also a past LAUSD high school math teacher, uh, past Montessori teacher, and if you can believe it or not, I'm also a past call center manager at um, at and So I have the pleasure of being our host for our parenting webinar tonight. And before I introduce our guest speaker, I wanted to have a little fun with everyone, um, get to know you a little bit with some poll questions. So let's get started with our first question here. We like to be interactive. So our question one, how do you define a super parent? And if you're on Zoom, you're gonna be able to vote and click. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can go ahead and chat or comment. How do you define a super parent? Go ahead and make your selection. I'll give you a moment there. Okay, let's see our results. How do we define a super parent? So about 19% of us says a super parent makes life as easy as possible for the children. About 25% of us say a super parent can do it all, have a successful career and raise perfect kids. And about 56% of us say there's no such thing as a super parent. So that's great to see kind of where we're all at right now. So let's go for our second poll question. And thank you all for participating in that one. Our second poll question, I'm very curious to see, are you a super parent? Go ahead and pick again, the best answer that fits you and your situation the best. What do you think? If you're on Facebook, go ahead and you can just type in an answer. Do you think that you are a super parent? Okay, let's see, how did we answer this question? So we have 0% saying that I'm a super parent and I have a perfect child. We have about 11% saying I am a super parent, but I am always interested in expanding my powers. About 47% of us say I am trying to be a super parent, but I just can't do it all. And about 42% say super parent, how about super tired? <laughs> and you know what, I think that's a sentiment of a lot of us here. And again, more than 80% of us, okay, you know, we're trying to get there, but we may not be there yet, which is, is why we're all here today, right? So we're going to go ahead and dive in to this thought about the super parent. And who better to tell us about being a super parent than our superhero comic book writer, Stan Lee, right? He is famous for creating characters like the Avengers, uh, Black Panther, and Spider-Man. And he said for a superhero, he said a hero is someone who is concerned about other people's well-being and will go out of his way to help them, even if there is no chance of a reward. And that person who helps others simply because it should or must be done and because it is the right thing to do is indeed without doubt a real superhero. Now, because we're doing a super parent uh, webinar, let's think about that by substituting the word parent for hero. So a parent then is someone who is concerned about your child's well-being and will go out of his or her way to help them even if there is no chance of reward. That person who helps your child simply because it should be or must be done and because it is the right thing to do is indeed without a doubt a super parent, right? Seems simple enough? Well, not necessarily. And I'll tell you the reason why. If you think about being a super parent, well, I highlighted a few uh, parts of the sentences in red there because those are the parts that I would want to challenge a little bit. So go out of your his or her way to help. Well, yes, parents are going to do everything they can no matter what to help your, your children. But if you want to think about it, it's not necessarily doing everything for them, right? 
Is it carrying all their clothes for them, carrying all their bags for them? Or is it how you're helping? What's the best way to help, right? So we wanna really qualify that help piece to be a super parent. So from there, Montessori, Dr. Maria Montessori has this very, very famous quote, never help a child with a task at which he feels he can succeed. And so again, if you think about comparing uh, Stan Lee's quote as a parent to a superhero versus Dr. Maria Montessori, we do wanna help, but we don't wanna help the children with things that they can succeed on on their own. So I really wanna challenge you to think about what your child wants versus what your child needs when you're thinking about being a superhero. Sure, they're gonna throw tantrums. Sure, they're gonna, there's, you know, not everything's gonna be smooth all the time, but really, really think, what do they really, really need and how can you help them develop their need, not just give them everything they want just because, right? It's not an easy thing to do. And that's why, again, we're all here today. So I wanted to show you all that you're in good company because we had so many good, questions that came from the beginning um, that you pre-submitted. Um, and here's just a sample. Again, there's a lot more than that that came in. So you're in good company and we can't wait to, you know, dive in with you today. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Chen. So she has over 35 years of experience working with the fields of education. Um, she started as a middle school teacher in Taiwan before she immigrated to the US and started her own family. And then from here, when she got here, she realized she was unable to find a preschool that was, you know, had quality education for her kids that she wanted. So she did what, you know, something very, very different than most parents and she decided to start her own school. And so that happened in 1988. And with that, from one school and one classroom and only seven children, um, Arborland has grown to two campuses with a lot more children and infants through junior high now this year. So we're very excited about that. Now, Dr. Chen, she has not only continued to guide the children, but she's also a teacher trainer. Um, she's taught tr uh, teachers through the Cal State Fullerton training program and also our international Montessori centers. Her dedication to her field has allowed her to earn a lot of awards that you can see on the slide, um, Women of Distinction Awards, Women in Leadership, Women of the Year, Educator of the Year. Um, and somehow in her spare time, she still seems to find time to serve um, on the board of the North Orange County Chamber of Commerce as well as St. Jude Medical Center. So she's most excited that in a few weeks, she's gonna become a grandmother. Let's give a warm welcome to Dr. Chen. Hi, Dr. Chen. Hi, I'm so excited to see everyone. Thank you so much, Veronica. Thank you for the very nice introduction. If I may say my definition of super parent is empower the children to do as much as possible to their ability so that we, the super parent, can sit back, kick back and relax, right? Because the whole point about parenting is raise the capable children that they can be independent and maybe our future can depend on them, right? So that's my take. With that, I think it's time we actually turn into look at the human development because when we discuss about the children, we cannot understand the children without looking at the uh, human development. So in Montessori, we divide the human development into four stages. So the infancy is zero to six, and this is what we're gonna focus on. We will be going through stage by stage. So under infancy, zero to six years old, as you can see, it's the absorb mind. It's they're like sponges. They, they take everything, it's just like breathing. They don't make an effort in learning, but they take everything in without discrimination. The famous quote is help me to do it myself. And of course, zero to three, it's more subconscious time, while three to six, it's become at a conscious level. And this time, they want to be physically and biological independence meaning away from the parents' physical independence. And they want to explore the environment through 
through their senses, um, everything is what, right? What is this? What did I hear? What's the smell? And also this time it is they're weaker in health because they just come to the world trying to get used to all the exposures in the environment. And there's a great physical and psychological changes at this time as well too. The next slide we're going to actually focus on the sensitive period. So what sensory, what sensitive, sensitive periods mean, this is the time that in a person's development when we are most responsive to certain stimuli. And it's the best time that we learn something the quickest. So let's look here from zero to six years old. The sensitive period is language development, senses, order, movement, small objects. And remember, they're striving for physical independence. Okay, and so with that little bit of overview for our zero to six year old children, um, I want all the parents, and again, in our webinar, we want it to be interactive. So I want you to uh, put some input into the chat. I want you to think, based on what Dr. Chen said about the developmental areas of zero to six children, what responsibilities can you give your child. And again, you don't have to be in the zero to six age group or have children in the zero to six age group. Feel free to chat anyways, um, even if you have older students. What are some appropriate responsibilities? Go ahead and chat to panelists and attendees that you can give zero to six. Home chores, thank you for sharing. Dress and feed themselves, yes, great. Let's see if we can get a few more. Being able to dress themselves and do chores around the house. Again, for zero to six, what are age appropriate responsibilities? Clean up after themselves and pick up toys. Very similar, good, picking up toys. Oh, that's great and I really appreciate the responses. So with that, let's go ahead and help in the kitchen. Yes, definitely. Let's go ahead and turn back to Dr. Chen and see what um, expertise that she can add on to this. I love the responses. As we focus on physical independence, remember this is an opportunity for them to be independent, to have accomplishment. And so, you know, as soon as they can walk, they can carry things. As soon as they can crawl, they can go get things. They can clean up after themselves. They can match socks. They can eat themselves. And a part of independent is be able to go to the restroom by themselves, really without adults' help. Now, remember the sensitive periods at this time also focus on language development. So in the language development, speaking comes after listening. So babies from zero to 12, they hear and hear and they listen from the parents, help them to develop the language skill. And then they start understanding when you say ball, what does that mean? And when you say, bring me a ball, what does that mean? And how about instead of just bring me a ball, maybe bring me a green ball. And then slowly when a child can actually use the words to express himself, well, what, what is this? What color is this? And give them choices. I see parents are so amazing that they tend to understand the child, but then the drawback is when you understand the child, you don't give the child a chance to speak for themselves. So please, when you understand the child, allow their language development to grow. You can see from simple words to phrases to sentences. And let's see the questions. So here we receive a few questions that we want to again focus on this age, the students are striving for physical independence. So how do I deal with the terrible twos and threes and the related outburst? So I want to say it's terrific too. They are not terrible. They want to be physically independent from you. Great, right? You don't want to be able to carry them for the rest of their life. And accepting that this is part of human development, then I think we will accept with a smile. 
The other one is if there is an outburst, if you just think about they are simply trying to be independent, ignore the outburst, focus on positive reinforcement, ignore the negative behavior. Next question, besides reading, what can I do with my child to help him or her grow emotionally and academically? So remember, our goal is to empower the children to be independent by focusing on their sensitive periods, which is language, movement, sensory order, and also the small objects. The social emotional development at this age actually based a lot upon the sensory. And again, it's what they touch. So use the language to explain what is this that they are touching, right? And then, um, you know, the feel, who does not like to be hugged? We're in such a difficult time. I still love to be hugged. That helped them to feel loved. It's the emotions, the touching, the feeling that help them to feel secure. Um, and then they can grow emotionally, feel good. And also this is a time the brain actually grow the fastest time. Um, the stimuli, it's really important that we stimulate on the senses to help them develop their brain. Now, language or the academic development. So because the children start from listening first as babies, please narrate everything pretending you are describing everything to someone that cannot see. And yes, seriously, when the baby was born, they really couldn't see well. So describe everything you do, whether, oh, mommy is going to change your diaper. You know, we're going to take this off. Ooh, it smells, you know, just talk because that's how your child is going to pick up the language. And then um, after they pick up the language from you as well too, remember, always ask questions. What, what do you see? What's happening? You know, this will help with the future academic development. Um, nurture their emotions. Use the facial expressions because children need to understand if they have your approval or not. And I know we get excited with everything they do, even things that they throw things, we think it's funny, but you have to hold your laugh because that send a wrong message. So if there's a, something you do not approve, show that with a stern voice, take away your smile. I am very disappointed. We need to pick them up, okay? And of course, most of the time you want to be happy. You know, you have a happy child. You want to nurture the love and show the emotions. Um, and let's see, another question is, my child has regret since the start of the pandemic. Any tips on getting us back to where we were? Well, it would be nice if you did not put the child to your bed, but it's okay. At least we're talking about it. So life is unavoidable with the change, right? But Remember, children only live in present. When you are out of sight, you are out of mind. Focus on present and give them assurance that everything gonna be okay because you are there to take care of them, which is always the truth. And also remember, you are the leader. You are the role model. And so any positive um, way that you think it's going to influence how your child think. So for example, um, the baby comes and yes, when the new baby comes, the older sibling does go regression. But if you actually focus on congratulations, you are the big brother. You know what? You're so smart. You're so good. Can you help me bring the diapers? Can you help me you know, bring the bottles? Empower them make them feel the baby is theirs. That way they don't feel rivalry and they actually enjoy having the baby. So if we can move on to what are the physical and language possibilities for um, three to six years old. So three to six years old, the center period is really similar, but they are capable to doing a little bit more. They can 
clean. They can actually make their own snacks, set up tables. They can fold the laundry. They can help with their pets as well too. And being independent on, you know, putting their own clothes on. The next one, it's the language development. So language development. So um, zero to three, we focus on listening and speaking. Three to six is a time we learn how to read and we learn how to write. So when we learn how to read, because the words have meaning, and so we start by showing them the beginning sound, playing games with their names. You know, what does your name start with, right? And read the phonetic words after they know the sound, you blend in. So, m mm, at, read it faster. M mm, at, m mm, at, right? Um, and then go into sentences and you'll be able to read books. For writing, you know, children start coloring from scribbling. Don't criticize. That's the beginning writing. And, you know, it's a control of the motion. Then they'll be able to write and from words to sentences. Now let's look at the questions. So our timeout, an effective way for discipline your child. So I always say the words communication is important. Time out and discipline seem to have a negative connotation. So the way I use, I like to call it thinking chair. It's a time to take a break and be able to take a deep breath, recompose yourself and don't let your emotions take over. So let's go to the thinking chair and thinking about what is my behavior appropriate. And when the child is calm, then let's talk about it. Is there a better way to do it, right? Um, and it's also very important that we need to stay calm because we want to be the role models. I know I get excited easily, but I will remember, okay, what's my role playing? what expression that I need to do. And I show the expression, I let them understand that. Well, how about, what do you think, right? So I think it's important because children, again, out of sight, out of mind, and they only see what's in front of them in their angles. And so adult actually can help by bringing a different perspectives. So another question, what type of question should I ask my child at the end of the school day? I know, Parents love it, but it's tough because, you know, what's in your mind is different from what's in your child's mind because you miss them for the whole day. You see them, you're so excited, but then they're so excited to see you and we are out outside, we are out of their mind, right? So they're not always interested in talking about school and it's not unusual when you say, what did you do today? Nothing. That is a typical answer. So if you want to get any answers at all, let's try to be more specific. Um, you know, like what, what do you do with the number work? Or do your teachers read you a story? What story do your teachers read? Um, did you sing songs? What song did you sing? And try to catch the present, you will have better success. If you see a child, you say goodbye, your child say goodbye with, or what is their friend's name? Did you play with, you know, did you play with him? So that will bring you a little bit more success. Another question, how do I spark curiosity or positive outlook or respect in my child? So, you know, at this age, remember they are in the absorbent mind and we are their mirrors. They see themselves through us. So we want to show them we have curiosity mind by asking, well, why do we water the plants? Why is the sky blue? Where are the ants going? Why does our neighbor look different from us? And you know, it's okay to even ask questions that you don't have the answers for. This gives us an opportunity to find answers with them and let them know that, you know, well, we may not know everything, but we know how to find the answers, right? And 
we show them the positive outlook by creating a routine that brings security and practicing appreciation. And also any challenges can be an opportunity for improvement, right? So it's always the angle how we look at it. And remember, we are the role model. And if you want your child to be respectful to other people, I think it's always great that we show respect to other human beings and other living things as well. Just being a role model make a big difference. Um, Veronica, how am I doing on my time? You are doing okay. All right. So <laughs> let's move forward to six to 12 years old. I know I get excited talking. So the six to 12 years old, the second um, plan of development, this age group, they are in the reasoning mind. Can we see the slide so everybody can see? So on the reasoning mind, they want you to help them to think. They strive for intellectual independence. They want to explore ideas and informations. It's no longer what, it's why, how, right? And their health is stronger. They don't get sick as easily and their growth is more uniform physically. And let's look at their sensitive period for this age. So they are able to understand, you know, abstraction. They have the ability to imagine. They love to know more morality and justice. They enjoy the cultural exposure and friends are becoming more important to them as they are learning to be the member of their small society, meaning the class and the school. And again, we want to focus on intellectual independence because this is their sensitive periods. Now let's see. So that's a good overview for six to 12. And again, I want a little bit of interaction from our audience here on Zoom. If you can think about what Dr. Chen just said in terms of what six to 12 year olds are developing, that intellectual independence, um, the imagination, all of that morality, what responsibilities can you give your child or another child who is between the ages of six to 12 that will help them develop those aspects? Go ahead and type in the chat. And if you're, again, you're on Facebook, go ahead and comment. Any ideas you may have, what responsibilities are appropriate to help them develop intellectual independence, morality, imagination. Okay, we've got some responses coming in. Ask them if they wanna make dinner and leave them to create the meal. That's great, and what else? Can we get a few more answers, a few more responses? Really challenge you to think about it six to 12 year olds, what responsibilities can they handle? Clean common areas, prep dinner, choose family outings, lead prayer, family projects. Okay, that's great. And I think we do have fewer six to 12 year old parents in this um, webinar, so no problem at all. How to allocate allowance. Oh, now we've got a lot of ideas. Take trash out, pack their lunch, showing them the concept of money. Those are all great, great answers. Thank you so much. Now let's go back to Dr. Chen to share her some of her thoughts. Thank you for putting in the answers. Now I can see that you all are thinking and realizing how powerful your children are and how much you can empower the children. So a few examples here just to share, right? So six to nine years old, because they like to be fair, it's great to create the rules with them and, you know, let them, you know, be able to think about the consequence together as well too. Friends are important. So it's time that we learned about, you know, how do we treat our friends? So we can be, we want to be treated the same way. Let's start from ourselves, right? Uh, give them cultural experience and let them read to you instead of you read to them, taking turns that encourage them to show off, right? Um, they are able to take off their pads. And, you know, it's nice for them to, again, see a different viewpoint um, because there are always different angles from the things that we are looking at, right? 
And another one I think at this age is very important is what we talk about intellectual development. So what's the intellectual opportunity that six to nine years old could have, right? And so allow them to ask questions, allow them to get answers, right? And let them create a schedule and follow through with a schedule. They know facts from the fictions. And so it's just really great. Um, they love reading. We can discuss about reading critical thinking, right? I mean, in math, well, when they go buy something, maybe don't use credit card, let the child go and pay for it. And then, you know, um, anything that you can carry on the conversation with them to help them, I think it's great. So next, let's answer a few questions. So how do I build more confidence in my child? We want our children to be confident. And remember, we are their mirrors. So zero to six years old, parents are the mirror. And six to 12 years old, both parents and the friends become the mirror. So what I would suggest, number one, is focus on your child's strength, right? There's no two people the same appreciate who your child is. And, you know, sometimes our challenge is because we love them so much, we want them to be perfect. And then it's so easy to see the imperfectness, right? Um, well, I think we want to, again, focus on the strength. No one is perfect. You don't want the child to think that it doesn't matter how much I try, I can never meet my parents' expectation. That will hurt the self-esteem. And the other one is try not to make comparison. We don't like people to compare us to anyone else. So are the children. Don't compare them with the siblings. Don't compare them with your friend's child. And if you ever want to compare, use your child's strength, right? Never use your child's weakness and comparing to someone else's strength. That is not fair. And, you know, it's again, understand that um, how the friends like to be treated and we treat them the same way and that will help them to earn um, friendship. Um, And also um, don't forget to arrange date because they want approval from their friends. So in the digital day now, a digital day is fine. Or even if you want to arrange to go to the park, they can still talk in distance um, or they can kick balls as well too. Whatever works to have that connections that having connection with friends and have the parents approval will help the child to build the confidence. The other one is how to help the kids with anxiety, depression, and lack of close contact with friends. We talked about friends already. Um, so let's talk about, so um, avoid anxiety. Let's try to be a listener and understand where the emotion is coming from by giving you a child an opportunity to talk about it and recognize your child's feelings, emphasize your child's feelings. You don't have to agree, but be understanding and help them to problem solve. Um, that will help them in the long run as they grow. So another question is, how do I get my child to get excited about eating healthier? We want our children to grow healthy. And remember they are in the reasoning mind. So one is actually let them think about what's the food for the brain development, right? And we want to be smart. What do we need to eat to be smart and be a role model? So if we eat healthy food ourselves, our children tend to want to copy us as well too. And also maybe just change the food presentations to make it a little bit more um, pleasing to the eyes. That could be helpful and don't buy junk food. So it minimize the excess of junk food of your child. And also not to be too worried, our taste bud does change with age. Um, if your child is healthy, 
you know, it's it's okay. But if there's issues, then definitely you want to see the doctor or have the teacher talk to your child. Sometimes look for outside source can be helpful as well too. So could we move on to the next nine to 12 years old? So nine to 12 years old, again, it's a reasoning mind. So we want to focus on the social emotional because friends are important here. So um, verbalize, give everybody a chance to talk. How do you feel? How does others feel? And then practice controlling our own emotions, regulate our emotions, um, have some hobbies, enjoy our life and be able to actually accept the consequence, um, helping friends, and again, be able to organize our family activities. I think that will actually be very helpful. Now let's look at intellectually. This age is more than how it's what if, right? And it's great. Let's think about what if, right? And they are able to publish books. They are able to discuss current events with you, read newspapers, um, understand the monetary values. Well, you know, how much is this a car worth? And what does that really mean, right? And let them shadow you to do things that you do at home, um, analyze, you know, what is good and what is bad. And let's look at a few questions that we have received. So this one is, how do we balance school workload, extracurricular activities, and the stress of being successful in school? It's like super parents with a super kid, right? So my take is life is all about making choices, making decisions. How can we empower our children to make good choices, right? So this is a great opportunity for them to actually think and decide. So prioritize what's most important. Is it must do? Must do comes first. Is it should do? Well, after must do, we should do what we should do, or it could do. And if we have time after must do and should do, well, we could do, right? So it's okay. We don't have to do it all, but it's important that we prioritize. And another important part is to break it up, make it a by size so that we don't get overwhelmed and get stressed about what's happening. And extracurricular, the point is actually enjoyment. So if it's a stress situation, then it's okay not to do the stressful extracurricular activities. So next question is, how do I know if distant or remote learning is right for my child or in person is much better? And of course, the answer is depend on your child, depend on your family situation. So as your child mature, have self-discipline, can be responsible of logging on time, paying attention, training work, and do all the responsibility that it's, you know, required of the child, or your child actually is the kind that thrive by having social interactions, get excited about seeing people like me, right? Or, you know, they um, would actually do better with the teacher holding them accountable. And sometimes parents, it's not about in-person or remote. I know some parents have concern about safety issues. So definitely discuss with the teacher. Um, majority of the children do better with in-person, but not every child. And the best way is please discuss with your child teacher and brainstorm what works the best for your child. And let's see. So we are going to, how are we doing with time, Ms. Veronica? We are doing really well. Okay, all right. So the third point of development, right? It's the teenagers, 12 to 18 years old. And this is the age that lots of time we parents have um, challenge with because by this time, they sometimes physically bigger than we are. And 
in elementary ages, they think we're heroes. By this time, they think that my parents don't know everything. Or sometimes they think that, no, you don't understand. <laughs> and those are all normal developments. So don't get offended when your child feels that way. And let's focus on, because they have the humanist mind, right? So they need to be getting into the bigger society instead of their classroom, their school. They need to see how the bigger society works. And so they striving for social, economic, and emotional independence. So it's a time that they transition from family life to life in the society. And this time, because hormone kicks in, um, you know, they got a huge growth spurt, uh, their health situation um, does come varies, not as stable as the elementary ages. And so similar to toddler ages, they actually going through the great physical and psychological changes. Mm -hmm. And that's why we say the terrible two and the teenagers have certain similarity. The similarity is they both want to be independent. So the toddlers want to be physically independent. The teenagers want to be emotionally, economically independent, even though they are not there yet, but that's the stage to help them. So the sensitive period here is about social justice. Well, why things are happening this way? This is not fair. And this is a good opportunity to let them voice and let them to go and help, right? And it's also important to have heroes and role models. Now, the heroes at this time most likely are not parents anymore, but have a heroes, you know, whoever that they um, admire, whether it's Walt Disney, whether it's, you know, Steve Jobs, um, any person they feel that has good contributions and they want to learn from will be a good hero. Doesn't have to be a famous person, you know, any person that they feel that they want to learn from, they want to em emulate, that's good. Um, it's important for them to have personal dignity and they want to be belonging. And so it's important that um, this, the age that they need to have good friends, if they don't choose good friends, then this is the time the gangs happens. And of course, parents are definitely worried about um, the ability to select friends. And so that's why we want to start much younger ages and learn how we select friends. And at this time, they want to be economic independence. How do we do that? Well, let's give them an opportunity. So that's right into our lead in for our next chat. So for parents out there on the Zoom and on Facebook, can you go ahead and think about what responsibilities can you give your children who are between 12 to 15 or even 12 to 18 that kind of fulfill that economic independence need that they have to strive for? What are good responsibilities for the 12 to 15 age group? Go ahead and type in the chat or comment on Facebook. I want to really challenge you to think about 12 to 15 or 12 to 18. What are some responsibilities that they can have? Making a budget, saving for a goal. Okay, what else? We have mowing the lawn, they can start working, they can start making money from their own bank account, they can open their own bank account, they can volunteer. That's great. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it back to Dr. Chen. Let's see what we think for some of these additional responsibilities that we can help 12 to 15 year olds with. I love the parents' engagement. This is great. I can see your brain juice is really flowing. So here are a few examples similar to what you are saying, right? They can wash the car. Um, you know, don't just give them money. Let them do things before you give them money. Let them earn 
and because they're proud of what they are capable of doing, right? They're able to, you know, help you to pay the bill. They're able to actually be a mentor for younger people. They could volunteer helping older people, helping younger people, helping you. Um, again, the key point is about empowering them, help them to learn who they are, their strength. Um, and another important part is choosing good friends. Good friends, my definition is those are, we have good influence, positive influence with each other. Those are my good friends. If we have negative influence with each other, we need to stay apart. So here's a question that was um, sending to us. So remember, we're striving for economic independence, right? The question is, how do I build a relationship with my child, even though we know they are pushing us away? We love them so much. Um, the key is do things that you both enjoy. If just something that you want to do is hard, but lots of time we have the same interest. If they want to bake cookies, let's bake with them. If they like to go play sports, let's play with them. So having the common interest, looking back, you will really appreciate each other and the fabulous time that you both have together. I also suggest that by this age, you want to start letting your child take the lead but I'm not saying that let the child fly. Let the child take the lead, but you complete it. So working together as a team, by they lead, you follow, but you are still the supervisor. You make them believe that they are the leader, but you are the back leader. So they still need your approval for things, right? They are not independent yet. So such as, you know, mom, I want to go to you know, my friend's birthday party. They can't just go. They need your approval. They need you to drive them. And, you know, you will ask, well, who is this friend? What are you going to do there? You know, is this a good friend or not a good friend? And then you can say, okay, well, what do you think the answer I'm going to say? And let them say the answer, right? About empower them for the whole time as much as you can. And then remember, when it comes to the consequence, their cell phone is yours. They cannot live without their cell phone. The cell phone is yours. Their computer is yours. You have every right to put them away. And so it's not what you would like to do, but again, it's cause effect, behavior consequence, and they should already understand what they are expected to do and what is the consequence going to happen? And also another way is, you know, volunteer together. I think it's great. Do something that you both enjoy and volunteer together and you want to know who they are friends with. The best way is to invite friends, do things together with your child and the friends. All right, so we talk about the, well, the first two and a half stage of development. So in summary, life is happening linearly. If our demands, our needs are not met in one stage of development, there's going to be a hole. And eventually the result is when we become adult, we will become a mature adult, as you can see. So if we grow with what's the physical development, right? So zero to six years old, so we focus on physical development, help the child to be independent. And then six to 12 years old, so we focus on intellectual development because zero to six, they learn how to read. Six to 12, they read to learn they have the ability to learn almost anything they want to, especially in the digital ages. So once they have that intellectual um, independence, 
then they are able to demonstrate their economic independence, right? By 18 years old, they should be able to definitely make money even though not supporting themselves, especially people are going to school and work at the same time. But it's definitely nice to have the ability to earn some money for themselves. And that definitely make them feel better. And the goal is super parents empower the children to do what their ability can do. The more they do, the more capable they are going to be, the more responsible they will be. And at the end, we will have a happy, mature, confident, responsible person. And that's what we talk about. We start from independence, going to knowledge, going to compassion. When we are independent, when we have the knowledge, when we can emphasize and understand and helping other people that help us to be a mature adult. All right, let's see if we have any more questions and Veronica. Yeah, see. thank you, Dr. Chen. So just to summarize really quick, um, I appreciate all the expertise. Like Dr. Chen said, it's not really about want or need. It's really about understanding the child, where they are in development and really making sure that you help them do for themselves, not give, 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 but help them do for themselves and what they need is really what they need. And so to conclude, don't have to worry about being a super parent, you know, um, what you really should just worry about is being a parent who can help your child help themselves again, because we want them to be that independent adult contributor to society in the future. And so with that, I think we have a time for a couple of questions. And it looks like um, we have a question here. I'm gonna go ahead and ask Dr. Chen to answer. How do we build to fill those holes when in retrospect, we see our missed opportunities, particularly for those of us who did not start our child's education with Montessori. So let's say we already missed some of the developmental aspects. What do we do now? How do we fill those holes? Well, I think I would need to understand what a hole is, right? So if you think about, um, I don't know, is it emotional development? Is it, you know, it's, it's not too late. If your child does not have the ability to choose friends yet, let's talk about it, right? If your child um, cannot be accountable to follow a schedule yet, well, it's not too late to talk to your child about, well, what do you think? You know, what's, whose responsibility it is, how can we do that? So, you know, it's always better be late than never. Thank you, Dr. Chen. And so we have another question here. Do you have resources for parents to encourage ongoing communication between parents to have a unified approach without either parent having to lose a sense of their own style. So it sounds like maybe having the two parents work together. What's, what's a good way to encourage that ongoing communication between two parents? They need more help in their tool belt. I'm sorry, can you verify again? It's a question about two parent communication or the, the question about parent communication to the child. Where is the missing link? each other so that they I believe it's parent communication to each other so that they're unified in approaching the child um, with the same on the same page my key is always respect your partner two people oftentimes have two different beliefs we were raised from different families we did not you know, we have lots of different opinions. That's absolutely common. But the important part is support your partner. So if your partner already tell the child something, whether it's a yes or no, let's go with it. Because you do not want to create um, a difficulty situation because family, it's all together, not just you and your child. This child belongs to your partner as well too. So it's very important to be respectful of your, uh, of your partner, especially when you have disagreement. And 
Another way is what we teachers talk about. So we have two teachers in the classroom as well too. So we will say that let's talk behind the child. So the child doesn't know we talk behind the child. And when we come out, we want to be united together. That way the child doesn't go to one parent and you know give a different, they know who to go to get the answer they want. So working together and you know how to communicate, right? Right now it's so easy. A text, a phone call, anything works for the parents. Thank you, Dr. Chen. I think we have one more question that came from Facebook, I believe. It says, social distancing has made it challenging for children to strengthen their friendships. Zoom can only get us so far. I know you touched on it a little bit earlier, but maybe if you can, you know, add a little bit more to how to help, you know, strengthen friendships during COVID times. I would discuss with your child, um, it's not about how many people you're friends with. It's who you are friends with. Well, who do you want to make a connection to, right? And let's just do one at a time, it's okay. So, and also which way do you like to connect with the friend? Do you like to Zoom with your friend? Well, by all means, right? Or do you like to set up a date? And so what do you want to do with the date? How can we follow the social distance, right? Because I mean, we can talk with six feet apart. There's no issue for us to talk with six feet apart. Um, we know we can even eat together when we keep some distance. So you don't have to be physically apart. You just have to be conscious about maintaining that social distance and with bringing the safety measure. So you can wear a mask when you talk with your friend and keeping the social distance. And again, washing hands, right? So do not take away the social connections. Human beings need it. Thank you, Dr. Chen. I really appreciate all of your expertise and some of our um, people on Zoom, our parents on Zoom are also thanking you through there as well. So we appreciate it. And it's just about time to wrap up here. So I want to thank everyone for joining us here on our Arborland Parenting Seminar, Finding Your Super Parent Powers. I hope you were able to take away at least a couple of practical tips. Again, remember, it's not about just wants, make sure that you're giving them what they need. And a lot of that need is responsibility to develop themselves, right? So if you are registered on Zoom, um, we would appreciate if you could fill out, there should be a survey coming to you after this um, or by email as well. Um, so we can always improve ourselves because we're always looking to improve. Um, and follow us on our social media, on Facebook. Um, thank you so much and have a wonderful, wonderful evening. I want to... Oh. Go ahead. You. Well, I was going to say that I didn't want to take my knowledge away with me to the you know grave. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my experience and my knowledge. Have a beautiful evening. Thank you. Bye.